the San Mateo County Harbor District Board of Harbor Commissioners special meeting agenda for June 8, 2015. I'd like to recognize and thank staff, commissioner, I guess it's singular tonight, and members of the general public for attending our meeting tonight. Emily, could we have a roll call? Yes. Commissioner Bernardo. Commissioner Brennan. Here. Commissioner David. Commissioner Paravana. President Matouche. Here. Well, in as much as we don't have a quorum to continue our business, what I'd like to do is have public comment. And <clears throat> there will just be some open discussion that will be non-binding because the Without a quorum, we can't vote on anything. Well, I have a point of order. Usually we wait about, um, we give like an extra 10 minutes for commissioners to show up. <clears throat> so if, maybe we should wait and give people a chance to show up. All right, perhaps we're good for uh, recess until 20 minutes until seven. Okay, and, and I had another, another question. Where are the, uh, where is our general manager and our council? That's an excellent question. I came from Miller, I just drove straight over. So maybe they're running late? I don't know. Okay. Yeah, well, we'll seven. just wait and see. Okay. Yeah, I got here early, so I can talk her, so I did Fisherman. Um, my public comment is that um, I see that we have another lawsuit filed against the district now. So we have three that I know of against the district since the first of the year. I think this is really a travesty that this is going on. And uh, I think that if you know anything about lawsuits, it, nobody really wins on any of this thing, and it costs everybody a lot of money. And I think it would be smart to try to get rid of as many of these lawsuits as we could by having this general manager and the staff try to go and talk to the people and try to work something out. I, I think it's a, it's a lawsuit, all it is is about making people communicate. So why can't we just sit down, figure this out, without spending a whole bunch of money and it'll be clear who's right and who's wrong. And and if you can't come to think, then, you know, you have no choice, but you're going to have to go through the lawsuit. And, but there hasn't been no no trying to mitigate the damages. And that's what I think that the district should have to do, mitigate the damages on the, you know, whatever lawsuit that comes to, against the district. And I think that's a prudent way to handle everything. And, I, and if you look at past this, uh, past the uh, lawsuits against the district, I mean, we, we we never had this many lawsuits in one time. And, you know, and it's just, it's, I think it's just, it's caused by reckless uh, management here. You know, and I think we, you know, we just have to stand up and, and, and use the chain of command like, like they said they were gonna do at the last meeting, you know, and I think it would start with, staff and bringing it to you. This is what they found out and everything like that. Legitimate facts, not something that's trumped up, just legitimate facts and deal with it. Thank you. I'd just like to make a point of order that that there are not currently three lawsuits against the district. So just, just for clarification. Is there any more public comment before we get on to our agenda? One. Oh, but I'm still putting out my form, should I? Give it to me after you uh, fill Thank it out. Um, oh, X marks the spot. Thank you. Um, Roy Salumi, um, I, I live in San Mateo County. Um, first, the first thing, I've, I've served in public office, I was on the school board, so I, I have a sense of, of what elected officials go through. 
And uh, first thing, I, I salute your courage for being in office and donating your time uh, to a good cause. Um, I have a suggestion that might improve transparency. And uh, I, I've got to finish right away. Oh, okay. Thank no you. Yeah. not finished yet. Yeah. That it might improve uh, transparency and also um, uh, possibly uh, make uh, relations on the board and relations with the public just a little bit easier. Um, the, I, I realize I, I'm very familiar with the Brown Act, but there is an exception to the Brown Act that allows uh, members to use their right of public speech uh, to, uh, for a blog to address uh, the public uh, in, uh, in, in everybody. Anybody in the public can read what they write uh, and their opinion about various issues that are not covered by things that would be uh, closed session matters like contractual or contractual matters or negotiations or disciplinary matters. So my suggestion is that you host on the, the commission's website a space for each of the commissioners to uh, answer a question of the day or a question of the week uh, through the general manager uh, and uh, questions either he would generate or would be submissions from the public. And uh, the, car or the commissioners could um, uh, the commissioners could uh, comment just briefly on their general opinions about issues, whether they're related to environmental or, or commercial fishing or whatever. And um, this would be available to the public, and every commissioner could read it as well. And so I think you might get a sense, each of the commissioners also might get a sense of what was going on as far as uh, the other commissioners' kind of general thoughts on a particular issue. It might actually help grease the thinking process a little bit among the commission. Um, and it would also inform the public. Uh, and you could choose to, to post or not post or whatever. But I think if all uh, the commissioners uh, kept a regular blog where they answered a specific question on the, the uh, commission's, on the district's website, I think that would go a long way to uh, at least improving communication and getting ideas out there. So I, I, I respectfully submit that, that suggestion to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Any other general comments from the public? Moving on to item one under new business, consideration of entering into contract for legal services with Whitmer Park and LLC to assist with comment letter responding to circulation draft municipal service review. First slip I've got up here is Leonard Warren. Good evening. Uh, I have to, as the last time this board scheduled a, a special meeting on a Monday night, I have to run off to another meeting of a board that I'm on, or as I said before, well, let's not go into that. I want on the record, though, that it is very disrespectful of the three missing commissioners to not be here. And disrespectful to the public, you know, not just to you, but it's disrespectful to the public, and I want that on the record. Um, so I'd like to comment on both agenda items and then I have to run. Um, I, I think that, I, you know, initially I was looking at, um, you know, why bother hiring um, uh, another law firm, but then I, it, it occurred to me that uh, uh, we were parking, uh, got the Granada Community Services District reorganization through LAFCO um, against a lot of political pushback. There was no technical reason not to approve it, but there was a lot of political pushback, and, and they um, knew how to uh, steer the course and get us there. So I think that it, it does, in fact, make sense um, for this district to hire them uh, uh, to assist with the MSR. And then once you accept that, then why do you need two law firms working on it? So I, I suggest that you hire uh, uh, Whitworth Park and, and uh, have them exclusively work on the MSR. Um, commenting on the other agenda item, uh, my district uh, rents the whole third floor. The second floor appears to me to be about 50% bigger than the third floor in terms of indoor uh, space. Um, and we have the whole Alhambra side as our meeting room. 
the office side, uh, the, the ocean side, has our staff members there and all the district files, um, except for some that are off-site. Interestingly enough, we previously were on the second floor renting only the Alhambra side, just half of the second floor. And in that space, we had the meeting room and the staff office space and the files, all in that half of the second floor. So I suggest that, and I'm not saying don't go out and hire the, the, the um, whatever special consultant uh, the um, memo mentions, but before you hire that consultant, the commissioners and the general manager should go upstairs and look at our layout there and see that there's no excuse why you can't fit in there everything that was originally planned to fit there, meaning including the meeting room. Um, but if you hire the special consultant, send the special consultant upstairs to look at it. Because this is ridiculous. There's no excuse why you can't put it all in on the second floor in the space that you have. Thanks for calling me. Got to run. Thank you. Brian Rogers. Excited. All right, well, it's kind of a good point since somebody showed up. But uh, yeah, basically, this one makes no sense. You're. you're got a report that one of their key principles is that you guys have procedures and don't follow them. And what do you do to respond? You go outside your procedures to hire a lawyer whom you don't need. You've already got a lawyer. You, you knew this report was coming out for, what, four months? I think it was the first time I've been said we were going to do the review. If you wanted to hire a new legal firm, why didn't you start four months ago? Um, now to come up with the, oh God, it's a rush, we, we have no time, because the report just came out and we've got to respond by the 26th, that's like straight out of Peter Gunnell's playbook. I mean, really? This is not an emergency, this is not a rush, this is, this is something you guys have known about for a very long time. And why you didn't work to replace your attorney when you thought you wanted to, I don't understand, but he's what you got. And as long as you're not going to follow the proper procedures, you're sort of stuck with it. So use it and just get it done. That report was pretty straightforward. The response shouldn't be that complicated. You're either going to start doing the things they want you to do or you're not. Not a really complicated thing. Thanks. April Vargas, please. Um, my name is April Vargas and I'm in the Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Um, it is serious what the district's facing right now. And uh, I want the district to remain uh, working on behalf of the people of the San Mateo County, particularly so the fishing community will have a voice that with specific meetings, specific people that are elected for that purpose, rather than having the, the harbor facilities and activities rolled over into the county system, which already oversees an awful lot of disparate kinds of activities. So in the interest of keeping the district from being dissolved, but more importantly, working toward a list of goals that the commission can get behind that legally will put the commission in a much better position um, to build on for the future, I would uh, recommend definitely looking into hiring Whitworth Parkin, who are, uh, I've known of that law firm for many years. They've uh, worked um, privately. They've worked in a lot of governmental um, areas. Very well thought of, very efficient. And as someone else said, they have um, very good knowledge about LAFCO, LAFCO procedures, and could really help, with all due respect to district council, but as to assist with making the strongest case in response to the LAFCO report that's possible. Um, as far as the money's concerned, yes, it's always better not to spend more money, but in this case, it seems to me that the existence of the district is hanging in the balance now. So if there's a time to maybe allocate more funds, this seems like it would be a good time. And then even though I didn't put number two on the sheet, as far as hiring a consultant for the office space, um, 
it's important that the staff feels comfortable, the things are well organized. One thing that I would uh, suggest that you investigate is uh, companies that provide furniture and then also include design services as part of what they do. Um, individual consultants will often have certain companies that they're going to recommend that you buy the furniture from. So if there's a way that you can kind of get the whole package at once, it would be very helpful. Um, also, there are a fair amount of companies that also deal in either repossessed, particularly uh, during the downturn, or perfectly good office furniture from companies that have either downsized or changed uh, the way they do business. So uh, it, perhaps if you could work with a, a furniture broker that sells new as well as reconditioned furniture with design services, that might be a good way to help the environment and also help get a good plan so that the staff feels comfortable in your new location. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, April. John Ullum on item one. Uh, I don't know what to say. You guys have been through this multiple times over the last couple of decades. We've hired lots of attorneys to respond. We've gone through this with grand juries. I mean, you can look at the response from the last grand jury, and you can see just how much denial that you've been cleaning up. You can see why it's such a mess. Read what the commissioners who aren't here have to say about um, the mess that uh, the grand jury found. In, even in the, well, it doesn't matter, he's gone. Um, you guys are talking about how to respond to LAFCO and justify your existence. First of all, everything in the LAFCO report is right. There is nothing for the attorney to say except, yes, we agree, allocate the facts or whatever it is. It's just the way it is. Um, your depreciation, your, um, your um, facilities are all in horrible shape. You've got no money. And you've got a lot less money coming. You've um, got a huge debt that's piling up with uh, post-termination benefits. Last year was at 3.9 million. This year it's up to something like 4.5. It's gone up to 800,000. That trajectory is going to keep going up for a while. You um, need to be thinking like about maybe some serious triage. If this was a real business that people were making hard decisions on, you would have cut loose South San Francisco a long time ago. You'd look at where your profit centers are, where your expense centers are. This is an enterprise operation. That is how it's supposed to be run. I know you have some non-enterprise functions, but most of those functions occur out at the pillar point. So your first decision has to be is what can we actually do? You're not going to come up with some grand plan that's going to create all kinds of revenue. You don't have the capital to make any investments to do such a thing. You don't have the credit to get it. Um, so you're not going to pull some rabbit out of the hat and increase your revenue by 1.5 or 2.5 million dollars. It's just not going to happen. You've maxed out what you're going to get from the fishermen. You've maxed out what you're going to get from your, your store owners. This is just facts. You're going to have to start facing some of this. The stuff everybody's been kind of dancing around. You know, we've got one commissioner who will tell you that everything's great because you've had a deposit sitting there for 19 years that they're going to use to pay off your debt to the EBW a year. And they really think, is he, that's not just politics. This is the kind of mentality these people really thought that meant something. But that really did show they were doing a good job. Well, you need to start thinking about you know, these decisions that should have been made five years, 10 years ago. And the first one's got to be, you've got to dump South San Francisco. They've got plenty of property over there they're going to develop. There's, they're going to be able to do just fine with running that harbor if they want to. There's a lot more to say, but the truth is, you can look at the whole history of this harbor district, and it's been the exact same problems. They've had the same kind of board dynamics for decades. They've had people in here um, to try to make you all play nice before. There's been lawsuits in the past. Don't think they tell you that that wasn't in part of the, the law of this, the district before. This district has got a legacy, as Mr. Bernardo would say, that is 20 years of incredible ineptitude, arrogance, entitlement. And the last thing I'd like to say is no group of people 
that is not going down the right path has ever appreciated when one of them stood up and said, we're wrong. Nobody in history has ever gotten credit for that. Nobody in history has ever been looked at by all the other people on the board, or in the committee, or in the Senate, or in the Army, or whatever it was. When that one person stood up and said, this is wrong, we gotta do something about it. Never is that person popular. I will consider that as you decide how you're gonna run this district. Thank you. Mr. John Newley. Well, I think it's wrong that we're going to you know, look at another time and another council to come in and answer the LAFCO report. We have a council here. We have a general manager. We have a staff. If they can't answer those questions and they're on that thing, we're all in trouble. So why do we need to go out and spend more money on a whole other attorney firm unless you fired this guy and you don't have an attorney? Did, and I never heard anything about that. Did, did that happen? Did you fire the, um, Stephen Miller in, in Hanson and Bridges or whatever their name is? Well, they're the people. I think we got, we, we've been working with them and I think we got to stay with them and I don't think we need to go out and waste a bunch of time and money, just answer the report and the cards are gonna fall where they're gonna fall. You gotta convince the supervisors over there that you guys are on the right track and everything like that. And again, getting rid of those lawsuits is a, a big step forward in my eyes. You know, it shows that this thing is making progress and everything. And I don't think we need to go outside and hire another firm to answer that report. Thank you. And the final comment on item one is Bill Kehoe, please. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, and also, thank you for showing up. Um, I have to agree with Leonard when he spoke up that it is a disservice to the community and to the taxpayers of San Mateo County when people elect representatives to you know, work for them and they can't take the time off to come in, especially with something that's this important. Um, yes, you do have your own attorney, and um, that's all well and good. I noticed in the staff report that they don't even mention the fact that uh, Whitworth and Parkins um, um, actually just got through working with Black Pro to convert GSD to GCSD, definitely not a center district to the Ganada uh, Community uh, Service District. Uh, so I'm sure the relationships are fresh and working and um, they would hit the ground running. I think one of the reasons why some community members feel it would be good to get someone um, outside with more experience, especially with the local governments, both at the county level and the special district level, is probably going to fare better in trying to save the harbor district. And as the previous speakers have all said, um, I think it's important that we serve the, save the harbor district. It's, uh, it is vital for the coastside and its tourism, um, which makes everything on the, all the money on the coastside flow. It's the fact that we have a working fishing port. Um, whether we should cut off South San Francisco or not, I, they're marching to their own drum, but they have bigger plans. And so I'm sure that's something that's gonna happen. Um, the fact that you're getting hit with the brunt of well, which is in 10, 20 years of mismanagement right now, uh, especially with the two uh, newly elected members, um, is unfortunate. But I don't think it's irreversible. I think a good lawyer could, well, you know, put the best spin on any answers that go to that. And I think it'd be money well spent by the previous speakers that have always spoken to. So I would be very much in favor of that you go outside and, and bring in an expert who can do a job. And although there's no mention of the cost, I'm sure the extra cost of ending could be nominal because you still have to pay your lawyer fees for hours spent anyway, as I just said. What's the difference? Can I answer number two while I'm up here? Or I know there's something to show this way. You can go through. Yeah, I'm going to go through. Thank you. Yeah. Number two is coming shortly. Uh, do we have any staff discussion on number one? We, we can't make a decision tonight because we don't have a forum. Right, you're free to discuss basically anything you want since it's not a meeting except uh, 
finance committee, you're the quorum of that, you two are a quorum of the other committee. Um, but basically, it's not a committee meeting, so, or a commission meeting, so. Other than that, I don't have any other comments besides that. Could you give us the report so we can hear it? Oh, sure. So the public is aware of it? Okay, well, um, you want me to read the report or to listen to the Read it or retell it, whichever works best for you. Um, so LAFCO submitted their circulation draft of the Municipal Services Review on Friday, May 26. The comment period ends June 26 of this year. Uh, uh, President Matouche, and we had a meeting with myself and general counsel, uh, sent a memorandum to all the commissioners that's in the packet, laying out a plan for getting a response that includes staff, council, and commissioner input um, by, uh, in time for the 26th. We also had um, an option in there to be considered the next regular meeting uh, as to whether the commissioners want to have a special meeting to finally approve our comments on the 23rd, or um, if they wanted to authorize the president of the commission to um, approve the final comments. Um, as far as um, Whitaker, Whitaker Park in, um, at the time I wrote the packet, I didn't have much information. I did copy their list of, of clients down from the website, and it did seem that they had significant local government expertise. Um, I noted that Hanson Bridget has also worked with San Mateo um, County Lafco. Um, I didn't have information regarding rates, and give me a minute to go through here. I think I do have the rates, but my memory is that the rates for the seniors at um, Whitworth are lower than um, our general council's. 285. Uh, yeah, about 285. And our um, general concern, that's Whitworth parking is 285 an hour. Stephen Miller with Hanson Bridget is 345 an hour. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't have those rates at the time I wrote it, but I got them from Tom. Uh, opened up that email this morning. Um, and um, basically, I think whether or not you hire them is, is to provide additional assistance to the policy matter. Um, I think that if you are more comfortable having additional assistance, it's, it's hard to argue that um, having another set of eyes look at our response is a bad thing. Um, I did uh, recommend, uh, which of course the commission is free to ignore, but I did recommend not designating them as lead counsel um, just because I want to continue with the planned response. But. Um, could you, could you elaborate on what is the plan? Because the, the board has not given direction to um, council to work on a response. Well, so um, this is the plan response. We, um, was, of course, as soon as the report came out on Friday, people started to give an initial review. Um, people, I met, which, which people? Uh, staff. I assume many commissioners looked at it. I know Tom told me he had looked at it. Um, um, I know that uh, council began to look at it, general counsel. Um, normally when LAFCO recommends that a district be dissolved, it's normal for district council to take a look at the document. Um, I, um, we set up a meeting to meet with council to kind of discuss our options for response on Tuesday morning. Um, we actually uh, conferenced in the president of the board um, and reviewed some options that resulted in the memo that is in the packet that Tom, sent, the president, sent to the other commissioners um, and outlined our plan for how we would respond. I've also since sent um, uh, emails to our management staff urging um, that they review the document for their areas of expertise and respond um, so that we can get all those comments in before we sort of sort through them and make sure that we have the fullest response that we can. Um, and that's where we are. The only thing that has changed is that um, as of when this special meeting was set, um, uh, Hanson Bridget is not um, doing any work on this until further direction because they don't feel it's right. If there's a question about whether they should be working on it at all, they're now not working. So I'm sorry, say that part again? Well, as, and I'm, Stephen's not here, but as I understand it, um, his feeling was if there's a question as to whether or not 
Uh, the commission wants Hanson Bridget to work on responding to this proposal. Um, of course, he had thought it might be resolved at the special meeting, not anticipating no quorum. Well, he was, was he going to be here tonight? Because I noticed he's he, not here. He would have been here tonight. Um, uh, when I, shortly after I talked to Commissioner Matouche, when I knew it was highly likely we would not have a quorum, I actually called Stephen and based on my assessment of, it wasn't 100% sure because I still didn't know whether um, Nicole David, Commissioner David would feel, be feeling better and come, but I said it was highly likely there wouldn't be a quorum, and so I told Stephen he didn't need to be here. Um, he doesn't charge for travel, but he would charge if he was at the meeting, so I saved a little bit of money there. Um, anyway, uh, of course it might have backfired had the quorum showed up. So anyway, he is not, um, at this time, uh, uh, expending any hours on the response. Um, now, that leaves uh, me with decisions to make. I'll probably confer with the president if this gets postponed or if this discussion is going to come up. I, I certainly think we need to get moving on the response. Um, probably the next one or two days um, might not be critical, but if we are going to, um, as I have recommended that we do, have um, Hanson Bridget be the lead counsel on this while perhaps seeking the help of others. I wouldn't want that, uh, him to hold off too long in doing work, but I understand his concern of um, running in billing hours for something that the commission, when it has a quorum, may decide it does not, is not work they want him to do. And I think he'll have to make a decision sort of based on um, his ethics as well. Can I ask a question when, when it's my turn? Go ahead. Just to give the public a little bit of background and staff, uh, Whitworth Park estimated to do a complete response would be in the neighborhood of three to $5,000. They also thought that if uh, Hanson Bridget and the staff and the commissioners had a project uh, fairly well down the road just before submission, they could spend uh, two to four hours reviewing it. Two hours might be on the short end, so that was amended to three to four hours at $285 an hour, just so that we know we're in the ballpark. Because of a lack of a quorum, we uh, can't make a decision on this item, so we'll either bring it forward, uh, because we do have a special meeting coming up shortly on another issue, and can't make a decision, so Commissioner Brennan. Okay, so thanks for that information because it's helpful to have the estimate of three to $5,000 for um, what we're parking to provide a response. Um, and I understand from reading their letter, which I think I will read out loud because um, I just got it. So Whitworth Parkin sent um, the district a letter on June 8th. It says, thank you for contacting me uh, regarding the municipal service review for the San Mateo County Harbor District. As you know, on March 5th, 2015, my office submitted a proposal in response to a request for proposals for district legal counsel. I have attached our proposal for your convenience. We would be pleased to provide special legal services with respect to the municipal service review if the Board of Harbor Commissioners decides to hire us to assist with the MSR. If approved by the board, we would provide these services for the same rates as those set forth in our proposal. And again, that's the 285 as the highest price and then paralegal work is lower. Um, we have worked with the local agency formation commission, LAFCO, in San Mateo County and LAFCOs in other counties. We have reviewed and assisted other agencies with MSRs on previous occasions. In reviewing the MSR, we would review the MSR, um, contact San Mateo County LAFCO to gain a more in-depth understanding of its concerns, provide a draft response to the MSR for your board's review and approval, and submit the response if so directed. If your board or district staff have identified special is issues of concern, we would be happy to review and incorporate those concerns in any proposed response as appropriate. Please let me know if you have any concerns or further questions. Thank you for your consideration. Very truly yours, um, William P. Parkin from Whitworth Parkin. Um, so having read that and also 
understanding about their the depth of their experience and their past work experience with um, San Mateo County LAFCO um, and the, the San Mateo County LAFCO director, um, I would be inclined to um, move forward if we have a quorum tonight, which we don't, uh, with hiring Whitworth Parkin to be the lead um, counsel in responding to the Municipal Service Review draft report. Um, and I'm disappointed that we can't uh, move forward because of the timing. You know, we have such a short turnaround to write the response. And what I just learned from our interim general manager is that apparently we don't have any council working on this right now at all. Um, so it's, we're just basically losing time by not addressing it um, tonight. So that's unfortunate. Um, I am a little concerned about some process issues. Um, I think that it's important that our staff understand, um, and particularly our interim general manager, that um, this is a five-member board. It's a five-member board that makes decisions. Um, having a conference with the board president and allowing the board president to give direction to staff is not how a five-member board operates. And um, decisions uh, on how to move forward with the district need to be made um, at the board level. And that means they need to be made at public meetings and a transparent process. And, and anything less than that is completely unacceptable. So I just want to communicate that. Um, you know, I appreciate the communication aspect, and I don't have a problem with the board president communicating with staff at all. But if there are decisions being made, they need to be made at the board level. That's how this agency works. Um, so I just want to remind the staff about that. And um, I appreciate the public comment. Um, so I think I've been pretty clear about where I stand with this. And I, I would encourage um, another special meeting at the earliest possible uh, opportunity so that the, the full board can consider this matter ASAP because we need to move on it. We've got to have a very well thought out response. Um, you know, this is probably the most important thing that the board will do um, while we're while we're members um, of the of the Harbor Commission. So um, I take this as a very serious responsibility and um, would like to move forward with it as soon as possible. Are there any other comments on item one, Mr. Dooley? What I just heard you—it it, just—it just blew my mind. We have a firm that doesn't know jack about the Harbor District, and he says I can do this for two forty-five an hour. Everybody knows. I mean, he's—he's he's not going to give you a firm. I'll do it for three thousand dollars. I think it's a billable hours. Hanson and Bridget, I'm not trying to defend them. But this, They've been with the program, they know what's going on. They're gonna spend less hours even though they charge you more. I think this 245 is a, a, like a lost leader here. You know, it's like the grocery store. You know, we're getting led down the garden path again. All right, thank you. Okay, on to item two on the agenda. Uh, we've got uh, the consideration, consider direction to staff regarding providing estimates for space planner services at new offices, 504 Avenue, Alhambra. Oh, Granada. We do have some public comments. Bill Kehoe. It's probably more questions than comments. Um, so, so this is this the, the current layout, or is this the future plan, or? That is the floor plan. That's the current floor plan. Okay. Um, I think it's important that, uh, um, but Linda spoke earlier. Um, so sort of on the button, take a look at what GSD, or GCSD, sorry, I'm still not used to the new name. Um, one thing I really would like the Harbor District to do um, in setting up their office space is uh, uh, make it public friendly, like a clear entrance point with a counter for people that need to process business, just like when you go to the county, you know, they have the the clerk's office is a counter there. There's people that we not know so on. Um, nice office, open office space so you can see who's there and catch the ride. Nobody's on the counter. The, those are all things that make the 
it more uh, public friendly and easy to use. Um, but the more important thing I, I want to talk about is uh, that it has a uh, an actual meeting room in it that you can use for the public meetings. But when you're not using it, that you take a look at the GCSD policy for other local entities um, in the community because we're always short of meeting space for for different clubs and organizations. And they have a set of guidelines, and you fill out a form, and you tell them who's the responsible parties and all that kind of stuff. And they go through some kind of training of how to set up the room, how to not, you know, knock it down at the end. Um, even give you access codes if that's so needed to get to the part, the public space, which is usually partitioned off from the office space where you have sensitive material. So I think those things are all really good to do if you're going to do it. And I think people should look now, but the fact that you could find um, companies that provide furniture can also work with those layouts, so you get a two for it, um, is a good idea. Um, so I would highly recommend that you do that, but I really like it to follow the PC um, as, the, as, as a, a homeless waif on the coast side, you know, uh, mid coast community meetings and things like that. Um, we're always trying to find a, a building we can have a meeting in that doesn't cost us two to three hundred dollars for a couple of hours. So it would be a big service to the community. Thank you. Yeah, that's uh, good for public comment. Uh, for the public to understand, we can't make a decision tonight. We don't have a quorum. We have talked to, well, we haven't talked to anybody. We did get an offer from somebody to help us look at some things. Should we wish to look at furniture and organization and space planning? Should we get a report from the staff first? Uh, do we have a staff report on this? If you like, I have the written report. Um, I usually only comment um, if I'm going to embellish. Um, but I will say that, um, you know, normally to me, um, how the office is arranged would be a, um, an administrative decision. But I am aware um, that everything I mean, do with this sort of reach sort of has become, at least the impression I had from walking in the office of staff, that it was somewhat politicized. And so I was very wary about changing any of the plans through the office or anything like that. So what I did when, when I realized in my first two weeks a number of things coming up, what I did was uh, say, let's not make any of these semi-permanent changes to the building, such as moving sinks, walls. Let's get our stuff in and see how it works. That's kind of how I, I'm not a professional space planner, but it's kind of how I do things, uh, have done things in the past. And it, it's a low cost way it kind of works. Um, but um, President Matush is in the office and he uh, was approached by um, our uh, current human resources person who's been tasked with uh, coordinating the office move with some of her options. And he said, well, the suggestion was, um, why not get a professional space planner? I thought that was a pretty good idea. I could have, by the way, gotten had the authority to get estimates for one without coming here. But being aware that it was an issue that um, commissioners were really concerned with, uh, and since this special meeting was scheduled, uh, President Matush and I thought it was a good thing to have it on the agenda. Um, but that's basically how we got here. Um, I'm the last person that will tell you that um, he is qualified to do space planning. And that's one of the reasons why um, I think a professional would help. I think even at this late date, um, my indications from staff is that they think that would be a good idea. But I haven't gotten estimates. I don't know if it's cost prohibitive. People have mentioned furniture. We actually, I think we already have the furniture, although there may be some pieces that might make more room, that sort of thing would be part of recommendation. Um, I really like the comments that were made about um, being able to have uh, public access, making it more friendly to people as they walk in, where the entrance is, where the reception is. Um, I would hope that we can have a meeting space that could be used by others. I think that, you know, that's wonderful. Um, and, you know, be sure that we have the access code set up so that confidential personnel documents are not in the same room as meetings that we don't go to, that sort of thing. All these things are uh, even more reason 
uh, if we want to incorporate those ideas, I think there are even more reason to have a professional in there. Um, but again, you know, it's the spirit of the report. Um, and of course, um, as far as um, you know, how we you know making decisions about how much to spend that sort of thing, it depends on the procurement policies that we have in effect right now. I couldn't hire professional services without um, going back to the commission. But um, you haven't checked into any. Yet. I have done no. I haven't actually made a call. Actually, uh, just in terms of workload, not a lot has been done since the well, a lot of things since the conversation that the president and I had about the space committee and the agenda. So, so um, can I ask some questions when it's my turn? All right. Okay. So. Uh, a couple things come up for me. Um, when we were negotiating, Tom and I um, are both um, on the uh, administrative office search committee. And um, when the lease was being negotiated, um, it was included in, in the lease agreement that there would be a wall built um, between the meeting space and what was to be the storage space. And also included with the wall was a, a sink and a counter that um, at the time our, at the time we had uh, acting general manager Scott Grindy and he really thought it was a good idea that we put in a sink and a counter because then we could have coffee service and if the space was used for events or something we would we wouldn't need to go into the other part of the offices. We kind of have everything we needed right there. And so that was built into the lease agreement. I'm sure you're familiar with that at this point. But what I don't understand is why the wall and the sink weren't built out because that was part of the lease agreement, a legally binding agreement. And from what I understand, the wall has not been built out and the sink and the counter have not been built out. And I'm very concerned about that because it, it makes me worried that we are now, there's some sort of breach of this um, legally binding agreement that we have with our landlord. And that isn't a position that I particularly want to be in. Um, so I'm wondering what the holdup is with the construction of the wall and the, and the sink and the counter. And I think that having the wall there was part of uh, acting general manager Grindy's plan when he was the acting general manager, to separate the space so that we would have a defined meeting space and we would have a defined storage space. Um, so I, I'm wondering, because that was all supposed to happen before the move-in, and uh, I think we need to get a report on what the delay is and what's going on if there's a problem or something with, uh, you know, uh, the, the lease and meeting the terms of the agreement. Um, so I would definitely like to hear back um, from Stephen Miller and from our interim general manager about the status of that because you know we we were very meticulous in how we included that in the lease agreement and it appears that that there's some problem here. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm sorry if I wasn't clear enough about my decision to not do the wall in the city. Oh, you didn't mention you decided not to do no, it. No, I didn't say not to. What I had said was, and that was my direction to staff in terms of the lease, was that I wanted to do a hold on those semi-permanent improvements until we got everything in the building because there were concerns raised that the wall where it was was going to impinge on available meeting space. There were some concerns about confidential document. I myself, being spatially challenged, wanted to see the items in the room uh, before making any decisions. So I didn't. I, 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 my direction was not that the wall and sink wouldn't go in, but that we would defer that until we had completed the move and looked at the articles in place. Um, Were you aware that it was actually contained in the lease agreement that that work was to be done? As it was explained to me, there were this it was among the building improvements that would be done with the building improvement money. But no, I, my, I did not anticipate that it was going to be a problem with the lease. I don't know that it is, but it's worth looking into. It's in the lease, yes. so it's it's very and, and cannot and cannot be changed. We can't. No, well, why we would we change it? I mean, that's what well, made sense. This is this is part of why we are having this discussion. It's in the, the lease, level. so we need to do it. We need to do it. It's in the lease. I, I don't know what else to say. You know, I think that we need to uh, go ahead with our space planner uh, and see how much of the storage that's in Suite A can move into D. But these are the things that we need a space planner to discuss. Um, 
there's a lot of things I wasn't crazy about in the lease. But right now, this is the way the lease was signed. <laughs> and the way we designed the project was meeting room and then suite D on our drawing was going to become the majority of the storage room, similar to what the storage room, uh, the previous in South San Francisco room looked like. It wasn't gonna be pretty, it was gonna be full, but we had also, our uh, long-term goal was to have much of this put on scan, put on microfilm, stored, and get rid of a lot of the boxes. I keep thinking somewhere in the back of my mind we even uh, were given some additional storage space off the parking lot that uh, somebody said that we could use for a while, but I, I, can't, I don't have that in writing. <clears throat> so that may have been just a discussion that went nowhere. But uh, <clears throat> since we don't have a quorum, we can't order anybody to proceed. I, I have a couple more comments when it's my turn. Okay. So. This page of the lease that I'm holding up um, goes into detail about the wall and the sink and the counter. And then this page, which is the, um, the floor plan is attached. And the floor plan shows exactly where the wall is supposed to be built. In the, in the lease agreement, it talks about the date by which the work is supposed to be done. And um, I'm just very concerned that there's a problem now with this legally binding agreement. So I think we need to get on top of making sure that the work is done as specified in the lease agreement and matching the floor plan that was attached to the lease agreement. So I just want to be super clear on that because I would hate for us not to get the work done that we um, agreed to in our lease. And a lot of effort was put into um, meeting the needs that were explained to us at the time by our acting general manager and in walking the space, working with the realtor and working with the landlord. You know, there was a lot of effort put into constructing this lease agreement. And so I'm, I'm just concerned that we are not keeping to it. Um, and then secondly, um, with regard to space planning issues, Another thing that we were supposed to have um, as we had at our old office was a conference room for um, you know, things like interviews or committee meetings, um, smaller type meetings, uh, special meetings of the board, um, conferences with council, whatever. Um, so a separate conference room, which this building offers on the second floor. There is a conference room. Um, so I want to make sure that the committees are able to access the conference room. I haven't been in the space. I have no idea how it's set up right now. I haven't been in, well, I've been in the space lots of times, but I haven't been in the space since the, the um, district moved into the space. So I have no idea what the current layout is. But the things that are important and are public serving are a greeting area for the public to come in and have a counter to speak with staff. A conference room is also public serving, um, and we have used conference rooms for public meetings many times in the past at this district, and our meeting space, um, which was part of the whole reason we moved in the first place. So those three things are public serving and are really important. The bathrooms are also public serving, but I don't think we need to talk about those. Um, I agree with some of the comments we've gotten that hiring um, a uh, Consultant probably through a furniture store that sells used furniture um, would be the smartest thing to do because they often will throw in that service really cheap or free depending on what your furniture needs are. And obviously we do have furniture needs because we're going to need to put in chairs and tables and seating for the board in the meeting room, which we've never had before. Um, my understanding was the conference room already had all of the furniture provided as part of the lease. The furniture was included, so we already have furniture for the conference room, so that's great. Um, as far as the storage room goes, I think that the furniture uh, company <laughs> could also help with, um, with planning the storage space and the shelving for the storage space and installing the shelving. And um, the furniture store that was recommended to us by Randy Kinghorn, who is our realtor, which is called Better Source, um, and they're located over in San Mateo, they um, can even move 
the storage. So they could put in the shelving and they could even move the boxes into the shelving and have it all done over the weekend and the staff could come in on Monday and everything would be ready to go. So there are a lot of options out there. Um, Better Source was recommended by Randy because they offer used and new furniture and they offer um, CAD drawing, space planning. They'll come over to the site, they'll meet with, um, with the general manager and the staff or whomever needs to meet with them. And um, then they'll put together a plan and have drawings and then that plan could be reviewed. It could be brought back to the board for consideration, especially with regards to the public serving areas. And then um, things could be moved forward. So it seems like that would be a, a cost effective way to do it and they're local and they're available. Um, and I see here that uh, I, I assume Commissioner Matouche has already provided you with their information for Not better. Well Not yet. Okay. So I think this isn't really an item that we needed to vote on anyway. It's more of a give direction to staff kind of item. Um, so I think at this point, you know, the, the staff could go back and, and um, come up with some solutions and work with with better source or a company like them. Um, you know, Randy Kinghorn is available if other references are needed, and he, he is our realtor. Um, so, you know, I look forward to hearing more about this later. Since we can't direct the IGM to do anything, however, in your recommendation, you'd like to get at estimates, may I suggest that if it uh, fits into your time schedule, that we proceed with space planning estimates and see how close we can make it to a meeting room and a storage room and look at our space needs, maybe even look upstairs, get an idea. And I don't know if any assistance you need from the board or we, we can give direction at a public meeting. We just can't do it individually. So at a public meeting, we can give direction. We can't vote on anything tonight, though. Right, and it takes, I mean, I don't want to make a big deal out because I'm looking for suggestions here, of course. Um, but, uh, you know, just your direction that you give to be binding requires a majority. But I'm just looking for direction. Well, if you maybe we should re-agendize this for the next meeting. That's fine too. Suggestions are good too. And uh, by the way, being new to the community, I'm eager to hear about vendors that should be contacted. So that's all fine. Tom. Yes. I heard the general manager right. He he said all he wanted. To it, hear excuse me, but please come up here if you want to make public comment. John Dooley, public comment. The general manager, if I heard him right, he just said he wanted to see if that wall was, was. I mean, people were in there, they weren't professionals saying this is where this is going to be and that's where that's going to be. And, all, and then now the staff is in the building right now, now in there, and all he said he wanted to see if this wall is a mistake or not. And I, that's what I, I heard him say. If it's going to be a mistake, why would you go ahead with something like that? So that's why maybe having this planner come in and look at this thing just to back up. So look, why, why do we got to keep make, spending money twice here? You've got some good points, and uh, we can't make a decision tonight. And uh, is there any other business in tonight's meeting? Does anybody have anything else regarding items one or two? I, I have um, just a couple of um, points of order that I'd like to make, or yeah, I, I would call them points of order, which is um, that uh, I would appreciate it if um, letters discussed at board meetings, such as the letter we received this evening, um, would be published on the district's website along with the board packet. Um, I think it's it's really helpful for the public. So if letters come in that didn't make it into the board packet, that's totally understandable. But if we could just make sure that they get published with the board packet so that people can review them later, that would be great. And then additionally, um, information that um, came in after the board packet was published, for example, the um, 
in, in this case it would be the floor plan, if that could also be included on the website as well. Um, that way for uh, people who didn't make it to the meeting, they have access to the same information that people who did come to the meeting have access to. That would be helpful. Yeah, I think that's a really good practice and I apologize for not knowing that handouts such as at the last meeting or this one weren't always uploaded, but I, I think that's an excellent suggestion. Okay. With that, I'd like to adjourn the meeting at uh, 737.